Hey guys, welcome to my shop. I'm Aaron with A. Lee Knives and this is episode 4 of the Intermediate Knife Build Tutorial. I'm going to teach you several different ways how you can make a guard for a knife. Hey guys, to this day, the largest supporter of my shop is Empire Abrasives. They're an incredible abrasives company. They sell all kinds of abrasives, especially my 2x72 belts that I use here in the shop. I buy all kinds of different styles of abrasives from these guys. They're great. They ship super fast. They've got great customer support. And if you go over there and you decide to buy some belts from them, at the end, in the promo area, just enter A. Lee Knives and you're going to get a discount too. So check that out. So the first two methods that I'm going to go over involve using a milling machine. Now I know a lot of you don't have a milling machine, so I'm not going to actually make the guard for this knife on the mill. But I do want to explain both of these methods because this is, however, the method that I use on all of my knives now. In fact, the other method is slow and difficult to the point where I literally bought my milling machine to mill guard slots. That was the sole reason that I bought this milling machine. But you don't have to have a milling machine to mill these guard slots, and that's exactly what I want to show you in this video. I got really good at making guards, cutting the slots with nothing more than a drill press and some files, and I've learned some really neat tricks and tips to get that right so that your, your guard fitment on your blade is awesome. But if you do have a mill at your dispense, there's two different methods that you can use to make a guard, and for the sake of the video, I'm going to use a piece of aluminum in the mill to show you those methods. So the first one is real simple. You're going to take your knife blade and you're going to put your bevel jig right on your shoulders. You're going to orient the knife blade in your mill and you're going to take a thousandth or maybe two thousandths off of the tang on both sides which is going to leave you a shoulder right here. And then you take your calipers and you measure your tang thickness after you've removed a little bit of material off and you select an end mill that is the exact size of your tang and then you mill your slot. That way when you put this on here, these, sh these shoulders that stand proud will come down to your tang and there won't be any gaps. That's one way that you can do it. Um, I can't show you that method because I would have to mill a little bit off of this tang and that's not how I'm going to complete this knife for the video but that is a good method. I only use that method on larger Bowie knives. Okay, I don't think that removing any more material right here is a good idea. This is probably a weak point already and if you go and mill a straight line here and a straight line here and put a guard up there, to me that's adding a weak point right there right where it may flex between the handle and the blade. So I don't use that technique on these smaller knives. The technique that I prefer to use is to take your piece of, of guard material and what you're going to do is you're going to measure your tang overall thickness. Okay, you're going to select an end mill that is just slightly smaller than your overall thickness. You mill a slot all the way through your guard material so you've got a slot all the way through and then you trade out for just a slightly larger end mill and then you mill a slot 95% of the way through so that you're left with a 5% slot that is slightly smaller than the tang. So you have a step on the inside of your milled slot and what that does is when you go to drive this on there's a thin piece of material that squishes out of the way and basically hugs the tang of your knife. So if you have any discrepancies or whatever, when you hammer your tang on for final fit, or when you hammer your guard on for final fit, when you hammer it on, it's going to drive that material, that last 5% that stands proud inside of your tang slot, it's going to drive it out and form it to basically whatever shape that you hammer it onto. I found that that gives you the most supreme guard fit and it's the easiest way to do it. 
it takes me very little time to mill a tang slot these days. So I just, I mic the overall thickness, I choose a, an end mill that is just slightly smaller, I mill the overall dimensions of the slot out, and then I get one slightly larger than that, and I go through and I mill the same slot without going all the way through. I leave about 5% of material. So, you know, I mean, that's just a little tiny sliver of material on the front face of the guard that's gonna sit right here. Now, I'm gonna show you what that looks like. I'm gonna throw this piece of aluminum in the mill and I'm gonna mill the slots just in case you're not following me. And I wanna give you a visual as to what that step looks like before you would hammer it on the tank. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump through those processes right here and then uh, I'm gonna take you over and actually pick up the piece of brass that we're gonna use. Here's my brass right here. And then I'm gonna go uh, build this with minimal tools and show you how you can do it with just a drill press and get it right and it's gonna be awesome. So stay tuned, I've got some super tips when it comes to making this guard. So what I want you to imagine is that I am milling a slot for my tang to fit right here. If I was doing the guard, obviously I would mill the slot in the middle. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to mill a slot on the side so that you can see a cutaway of what this would look like. Okay, so we've milled our tang slot. Like I said, this is a side shot of what this hole would look like if we plunged a hole and, and milled it straight through. A slot in the guard. So imagine this is the slot, a side profile view of it. So this is the overall thickness of your tang. That would be this original slot that goes all the way through, this end mill, would be slightly smaller than the overall thickness. Then we would go and trade this mill out for a larger mill, very easily done. And then what we're gonna do is when we come in this time, we will plunge cut all the way down to right there, about 95% of the way through. Okay, let me show you what that looks like. Grab a chip brush, move all the chips out of the way. Okay, so now what we're left with here is a small ledge. This is that 5% of material that I was talking about that stands proud of this. So this will allow your tang to slide through freely, but this will be extremely tight against your blade because this slot, the overall width of this slot was just slightly smaller than your tang. And then what happens is, when you hammer this onto the blade, this little tiny piece of material right here is allowed to smush out of the way. So with that little piece of material, as you hammer the tang on, see how that little piece of material is malleable and it can mold easily? So as you hammer that onto the tang, it will form around any imperfections that might be on your tang. Say one side of your tang isn't perfectly square. Maybe, you know, maybe this side was slightly thinner than this side. That's okay because when you hammer it on, this is going to mold to the tang. And it gives you a really nice fit um, up against the tang. This method here works exceptionally well. And since I have a milling machine, this is what I do 99% of the time on knives this size. On larger knives like Bowie knives, I do the other method where I actually come in with an end mill and I mill off a little bit of the tang, leaving a shoulder right here. There'd be a shoulder on both sides so that when I slide it into my slot, 
the slot would be the the tank thickness and this shoulder would hang over the top and it would conceal any small gaps or anything like that that might have uh, formed during milling the slot. So those are the two methods that you can use on a milling machine. Now let's move on to a more practical method if you don't have a milling machine. Okay guys, so let's go ahead and get started with how you can build a guard for a knife with some simple tools. And I'm gonna share some tips with you that I learned doing it this way that tremendously helped me. So let's go ahead and take our piece of brass and we're gonna go ahead and lay some, uh, put some layout die on it so that we could put some scribe lines on here for center and things like that. So we're gonna go ahead and I painted that on there. We're gonna just let that dry for a minute and uh, let me walk you through the process here. So you've probably seen a lot of other videos on how to do exactly the next couple steps that I'm gonna tell you because these are steps that you have to do. Um, but it's the steps that follow that are really important that are gonna help you um, succeed in getting your guard fitment really nice and tight with no gaps around your tang. So what we're gonna do first is we're going to scribe a center line on our material. That's gonna be the line that we drill our holes on. Um, the next thing that we're gonna do is decide how wide of a slot that we're gonna have to mill. So we'll just take the mic here and what we're going to do is we're going to mic this distance from you you probably want to mic the distance from a little bit into your radius you, you know how your tang doesn't come to a 90 degree there so let's make the slot just slightly larger than the tang itself that's probably good right about there so that's the overall length of the slot that we're going to mill so we'll go ahead and mark that length you know, for the slot. And then we'll, we'll go ahead and measure the thickness of our tang. So let's just, as an example, tell you what the thickness of this tang is. So this tang measures out to 0 0.130. Now, in a perfect world, you would go and you would grab a drill bit, 0 0.130, and you would mark it out and drill a whole bunch of holes in a line and you're good, but it doesn't work that way. Here's why. After you drill these holes, you're gonna have to connect those holes together somehow. There's a lot of different ways that you can do that. You can use a Dremel with a rotary tool and you know, with your holes here and you can connect those through and then take a file and file it. You could do it all with just a file, a small needle file to connect your holes. But my point is, when you're connecting those holes, you are going to enlarge in the hole. Is that a word? I think that's a word. You're going to uh, expand the opening with your file. You will not be able to connect all those holes without making the slot slightly larger. Filing is incredibly difficult to do it squarely. So, what I suggest you do <laughs> is go ahead and say, if this is 0 0.130 overall thickness, you certainly can't be any larger than 0 0.130 because you'll have a gap next to your tank. I would choose a drill bit at maybe 0 0.120, okay? And then that gives you some wiggle room while you're filing your tank slot. That's the first tip, but that's not the tip that's gonna really grant you success. I'm gonna share that with you after we get to that step. So let's go ahead and, uh, and get into this. So first thing I'm gonna do is mark myself a center line, right? So we'll just measure the overall thickness and divide it by two. So we're at 750. So we'll just cut that right in half. So that's what, uh, 375. So we'll just mark this out at 375. There's 375. We'll mark a center line here. Okay. Wow, I can do math. <laughs> okay. All right, so we've got a center line scribed. Then we go back to this measurement right here, and we decided, now this is really easy. All right, there's where it's at. That's your the width of the slot. We do need to go back to... Uh, Actually, here's what we need. What we do need to do 
is look at our original design, which I don't have like, actually, let me get the original design. You're gonna... All right, so here we go. So our original design shows that the guard is flush with the top of the blade. We, we are flush with the guard right there. Okay, so when we're milling this piece of material, it's going to end up flush with the blade. In this stage, I am going to leave a small amount of material on this side. Okay, we can trim it down later. But for right now, I'm going to machine the slot in the guard, leaving roughly that much material sticking out. Okay, that's just some wiggle room. So if that's sticking out and, you know, we wanted the guard that big, we're looking at, we're going to build the guard roughly an inch and a half. That's perfect. Okay. So I've got this thickness right here measured out right now, just the thickness of the tang. Okay. So I could just lay this right here, lay the knife blank or uh, the knife design right on my guard, account for the extra material that I want hanging off. I can just lay my mic right on that line and give myself a scribe. Okay, let me show you what that looks like. I'm gonna bring it in close. Okay, so I've got my material here. You can see, hold on a second, let me turn on this light too. Boom. Okay, so I've got my material here. You can see those two lines and you can see how the knife is going to fit on there. There's the, the slots. I left extra material on this side and this side's gonna be where the finger guard is. Okay, so this is what we have. This is what we have right now. We have our center line, we have the front of the tang, and the back of the tang, right there. The top and the bottom of the tang marked out. That's the length of the slot that we're gonna have to put in. So now we need to go over and select a drill bit that is smaller than the overall thickness of this tang. Like I said, this is, this tang right here, measures out to point one three three point one three three is where we're at so we'll go find a drill bit probably about one two seven somewhere in there you know one two five one two six one two seven we'll find a drill bit that mites out to about that thickness let's go over and pick out a drill bit Okay, so here's my drill bit index. I'm just going to come over, mic out a couple drill bits, and find one that's, that's uh, sitting right where we want it. I think that's going to be the one right there. Let's see. 0.127. That's the one right there. We're going to use it. Wow, that was quick and easy. It normally doesn't happen that quick and easy. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and move over to the drill press. Uh, basically, the idea now that we have this right here is I'm going to step over to the drill press and I'm going to drill my first hole right up against this line here and then I'll drill my second hole right up against this line on this side. So I've got the two outside holes drilled and then I will just drill holes as close to the center line as possible. You could do this a couple different ways. You could take a center punch and you can punch holes and, uh, and that can help you stay in the center. But that's one of the reasons that we went with the slightly smaller drill bit. You can really, once the drill bit's spinning, you can see how true this, this drill bit spins and you can put it right on this line and you can punch these holes out without much, uh, w without much hassle. Okay, and once you get these holes punched out, we're going to connect them with the Dremel tool. All right, here we go. We were set up on the drill press. This is just a drill press. I'm just going to hold this here. Nothing, nothing crazy. We're going to drill on the inside of our mark. Right on our line. Just kind of give it a test there. There we go, right there. Perfect. Okay. 
when you drill through a piece of metal like this, you'll always get a burr. I like to just scrape that burr off so that it doesn't manipulate how your piece of stock is sitting on the table so that you can get a square hole drilled. Now I want to show you right here that that line is right on the outside of my hole. So that's going to be on the outside of the shoulder of the tank. So you drill the holes on the inside of your farthest measurements, okay? So now I'm going to drill the hole on this side next. Okay, here we go. Now we've got the um, the shoulder holes drilled. We can go ahead and just pop a couple holes throughout the center. One thing about drilling holes right next to each other, you want to make sure that you put the hole an entire drill bit length away from the first hole. If you don't move it over far enough, what will happen is your drill bit will jump into the previous hole and you won't be able to drill a hole straight through. So just barely let them touch. I'll show you what that looks like. Alright, so right there. sorry guys okay so see how that hole is not connected yet it's the drill bit is just far enough over to where the drill bit wouldn't try to jump into the first hole okay here we go next hole There's not enough room for another hole. You can try to come through and drill a hole. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Or you can switch out for a smaller drill bit. I'm gonna go ahead and just try my luck at uh, getting it dead center and see if I can't get a hole to drill through. We'll see if I get lucky. Nope, I did not get lucky. It's dragging my drill bit over into the previous hole. Yep, right there. So that was a no-go on that. So I'll have to remove the rest of the material with the Dremel tool. Now it is a good idea at this point to go ahead and give yourself some idea of your overall thickness of your tank before you st start hogging material off with the Dremel. So I just throw it on my surface plate with the height gauge. I'm going to come to my largest hole, which would be right there. Whoops. <laughs> right there. Alright. That was 
probably a little bit too high. Let's see how we did here. I have given myself some lines for the outside of my tang. I don't want to go past those lines when I dremel these holes together. Okay guys, so for this part you can use uh, a whole slurry of different cutters for your dremel. On this one I am personally using uh, let's see, let me try to get this in focus here so you can see it. There we go right there. It's just a spiral cutter, spiral fluted cutter. I'll probably use this and a couple others to get this job done. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I've got this laid in the vise like this for a reason. I've got it laid in the vise at an angle so that I can rest a hand here and take the other hand and use my hand as a steady rest to put the cutting tool in there and put downward pressure so I can start to connect these holes together. Put on your safety glasses and here we go. pretty simple there. The rotary tool makes that a whole lot easier. However, you do not have to use a rotary tool. You can use a set of these needle files right here from Harbor Freight even. And this is how I started out doing it. And I would do it with just this one file right here, this little small round file. And I would get in there and I would literally just file these holes together. Very easily done and very inexpensive. So, this could definitely work. Now, we move on to the next phase of making the guard. Now we're getting into the good stuff. Okay, here is what we're left with after we've connected those holes with the Dremel tool. This is really as far as you wanna go with the Dremel or a, uh, a round file. And now what we're going to do is we're going to move to a good sharp flat file, a small skinny flat file. And what we're going to do is we're, we're going to attempt to smooth out the side walls and get this to look like a nice uniform slot. The way I like to do this is to put it in a vise that has nice square jaws. That holds it squarely. You don't want your file to ride on your vise, but it does help to try to get it as square as you can in the vise. A couple pointers here when you're, when you're cutting. You have to remember, the side of the guard that you've uh, put your layout die on is going to be the side that has to have the refined slot. This side, you can have a mistake or two. That's no problem. But if you have a mistake on this side, it's ruined. 
That's why I like to put the side of the guard that's going to be facing the blade towards me so that I can see exactly what I'm doing. If I wanted to err on the side of caution, I would remove material on this side slowly leading up to this front lip. I don't want to go in here at the wrong angle and remove material from the lip because that would make my hole too large near the tang. So, let's get in here and just start some nice flat filings. Just to connect the dots. I'm gonna get you a better camera angle here. All right, that's a much better angle for you. It's gonna be hard for me to work. That's good on that side. Let's go ahead and flip it over. get this other side filed in. Okay. Okay, so see how our tang just, it almost wants to fit in there. That's good. That's where we're at. We're gonna stop right there. And that's fine for it to be um, right where it's at right now. You don't want it to be any looser than that and we're gonna be able to fix the rest of this with the next couple steps. Okay guys, so the next thing that we need to do to fit the guard onto the tang is to taper this tang down slightly. Right now, the tang is the same thickness here as it is here. And if you try to drive your guard on, if there's any areas on here that might be slightly larger than it is here, then this will expand your slot, and then when it gets up here, it'll be sloppy. So the idea, and, and actually this is pretty common, because you sand and grind up here, so this will be slightly thinner than here because you haven't worked this at all. This is really easy to do, guys. We're just gonna walk up to the grinder and we're gonna just add a slight taper on both sides of this. You want your taper to stop right here. You want this area to be full thickness where the guard is going to sit. So I'm just gonna walk up to the grinder and I'm just gonna take some material off here and take some material off here. Here we go. And then you're gonna to wanna to just knock the edges off. That's it for tapering the tang. I'm gonna just walk over with my mic and mic it here and then slip it off. If you can run your mic down here and slip it off and it doesn't open the jaws of your mic, then you've tapered it well enough. Now that the tang's tapered, we can go ahead and shore up our shoulders here that are gonna meet our guard. So we're gonna bring our bevel jig back up. We'll go ahead and clamp it down right there so we can clean up these shoulders. This is one of the main reasons that I did not go to finish grit on the blade because I knew that we'd be putting this guard back on here, we'd be handling it, we could introduce new scratches. So there's no reason to go for a fine finish at the point that we were at when we uh, hand sanded this blade out. One note that I'd like to show you on this guard. Guards never look right when they're tilted like this. So when the blade's coming forward, you always want your guard to either sit at exactly 90 degrees or fall slightly forward. 
If you've ever seen a knife where the knife maker made a mistake and laid the guard slanted backwards, it doesn't really catch the eye correctly, in my opinion. So, if you're going to err here, err on the side of caution and lean the guard slightly forward of 90 degrees, it will look better. Promise. You can shoot for 90, but never go um, less than 90. Always go 90 or slightly past 90. And normally guards look better if, if they're not just at 90 to lay forward just a little bit. You can go radical and lay a guard way forward, but that makes putting on the handle segments a lot more difficult. On this one, I'm going to lay the guard slightly forward just because I like it that way. So I've gone ahead and clamped this on. I'm gonna show you how I clean up these shoulders. All right, so I come up here with a fresh 80. Got this on here. I lay the belt off the side of the platen just a little bit. And then I just come up to where this is square to my belt and I work it from the tang out. Then I flip it and I work the radius. You can just as easily do this right here with a file, but I like to use the machine. Oh, that good. I'm going to give you a close-up on this and show you what it looks like, um, which I don't think that I can do here. Yeah, maybe I can. There we go. So I've ground this shoulder up right here. I've ground this shoulder in right here, and I've given it a slight radius in both of the corners so they don't just come to 90 degrees. I'll show you what that looks like on a piece of uh, black granite so it really stands out. The guard, the guard will fit through like this, right there. And it will sit securely from this point right here to there, and from this point right here to there. So I've milled my slot from here to here. I've still got a line scribed right there. When I finish sand this, you won't see that anymore. 
So the next step in fitting your guard is to check the fitment. And you're going to need a couple things for that. You're going to need a good solid vise and a piece of leather that has no swarf on the inside that might scratch your blade. That leather, you're going to wrap your blade in like so. And then you'll install it into your vise. So let's just go ahead and get this installed. Like so. And you're going to want to clamp it down. I mean, really tight. Okay. I happen to have a monster vise, so that works really well. The next thing you're going to need is another piece of leather and something to drive the guard on. Something hollow that the tang can go through. So I found this socket works really well as long as the tang isn't larger than the socket. So I can easily slide this up and down. Then I have a piece of leather to put right here with the slot in it. So the slot goes over the tang. And what this leather does is it protects my guard from being marred as I drive it on with this. So what we do is we just set the guard right on the tank. Now remember, we tapered this, so this slides on pretty easy. Then we put the leather over here, we put the socket on, put on our safety glasses, and drive it the rest of the way on. Okay? And we check for fitment. So this is a little loose actually, looser than I would like. That's exactly what I wanted to show you. Perfect. Okay. So, here's where we're at, guys. We have marked this out, drilled our holes, and filed it. And we've made it too loose. I've done this all too many times. It's incredibly easy to make that mistake. Now, it's not really loose. It's just too loose. You want to be able to take this piece and have to drive it on so that it fits really tight. This can be fixed very easily and I'm going to show you how. Okay guys, so even if you have a good solid fit, you still want to do this. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take a punch. And what I've done is I've just rounded the tip of this punch slightly so that it's, uh, it's rounded over and not a, a perfect circle. Yeah, I'm going to come in here with this punch. Yeah. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the punch right here and I'm going to hammer down. And I'm going to push this metal over. And every time that I punch around this tang slot, it's going to move the material over. It's going to mash the material over and close this slot up. So depending on how sloppy it is, you'll have to move more material. Mine isn't very sloppy, so just by tapping some, uh, some punches all the way around my slot, it's going to go ahead and close that gap up, and I'll have to hammer this on, and it'll be a perfect fit. Now, you have to keep in mind, if... What you don't want to do is let this punch roll over your edge because you'll knock the edge off and that'll create a gap next to your tang. You want to put the punch way out here and hit it squarely so you're, when you drive down it bubbles the material over into the tang area but not break the surface of this, this uh, slot that you've put in. That's definitely not what you want to do. So you just want to come around your slot like so, and it will drive the material over. So let me show you that. Let's do that first. 
And I'm going to show you another cool thing. All right. This really does work super well. Oh, that was a mistake. Oh, but it was salvageable. Ah, I did it again. It hopped on me. Okay, that's what you do. So I just ran the punch and I punched a whole bunch of times around the outside of the hole and it moves the material in. And you can see that that slot is now thinner than it was and I'll have to drive it onto the tang. Now listen, you can do this, drive it on the tang, make sure that it fits, and then you can sand this smooth again so that this is smooth. As long as you punch these deep enough to where it moved the material over deep in the slot, then you can resurface this and you won't see these. And it works out great. But what I found out that looks really good is after you do this, just continue to punch the entire surface of the guard until it's textured. And then the textured surface really looks good against a, uh, a satin finish or even a high polish finish. This looks really nice. That's what I'm gonna do for this blade because I really like the look. So I'm just gonna continue to punch all the way around this thing in just a random pattern. And when I'm finished, it'll have a nice textured finish on this guard. So, like I said, you could take it from here Assuming that you hit these hard enough to move the material deep in the pocket, you can take this to your grinder or, uh, or a surface plate with sandpaper and you can sand it flat if you want a flat guard. You can still use this method and get it perfectly smooth and mirror polished and you won't see any of these dimples. However, that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and force these dimples throughout the entire guard. And in order to do that, I kind of just go for it. Just random.
You want to make sure that you get all the spots. You don't want any. You don't want to miss any spots. That's for sure. You can always go back and hit some more. Whoops. I think we're there. I think we are there. Yikes. So it's completely textured, rock pattern, over the entire surface that will be the guard. Let's go and drive it on. All right, so before when we drove this on, it went on really easily. And I'm gonna show you just how tight this is now. Look, I can't even fit it over the end. That's, remember this is tapered. So that just goes to show you how tight that made that slot. I could, I could literally slide this up and down the tang all the way to here before. Now that I've peened it in, it, uh, it, it grasps down on the tang. I mean, I got a hammer just to even get it started. Okay, so... There we go. Pull it up. Kind of center it a little better. Grab our piece of protective leather. And...
A plus. That is as tight as it gets. There will be a little play on the side of the guard where the slot is slightly opened up larger than the tang. That is fine. When we put the handle on, that area will be filled with epoxy and it will become very rigid. Yes, that is an excellent fit. That's what we needed to go for. So we'll go ahead and move on to the next step now that we have the guard on the tang and nice and tight. Yeah! All right, all right guys. Now that we've got our, our guard on the tang, to remove the guard is real simple. All you have to do is just loosen your vise, take the same piece of leather that you were using on the top, put it right there, which lays on the top of your vise and protects the guard material from being marred. And then you just very lightly tap the tang of the knife. while holding the knife underneath underneath the vise. So you don't, you don't want to uh, just let the knife flop out. So I'm holding the tip of the knife blade right now. And once it comes loose, it... Doesn't look great right now, but you guys just wait. You'll love it. Well, in this video, I hope that I've shown you several different ways that you can shape and form a guard for a hidden tang knife. This applies to larger Bowie knives all the way down to even smaller hunting knives than this. Maybe even a bird and trout knife could have a guard on it. You don't necessarily have to have a finger guard. You can just have a guard, just a piece of metal that the wood be meets up to. Um, that's real common. At this point right here, we're ready for glue up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure this out, cut it off, I'm gonna slide this on, we're gonna get our handle material ready, we'll slide the handle material on, get it all glued up and pinned, and I'm gonna do all that in the next video. You'll see how I do the glue up process, a couple really neat tips for getting everything straight and nice and neat and tight. Um, I've got a couple jigs that you can use that are super easy. You know, I see these guys making all these elaborate jigs to glue these things up. <laughs> Wait till you see how I do it. It's incredibly simple and you're not even going to have to make a jig to do it. So in the next video, like I said, we will finish sand this. We'll get this blade perfect. You'll get to see the hamon pop out because we will definitely want the blade to be finished before we put this guard material on it. When you put this guard material on there, you can't ever touch this surface again because your scratch marks won't ever meet the, uh, get all the way up to where the guard meets and you'll see a little ghosted line there. So get your blade perfect. So in the next video, it's gonna be really productive. Um, we are going to finish the blade. We're gonna cut this off, slide the guard on, get the handle material ready, do the handle glue up and all of that. So stay tuned, make sure you stick around because it, this build's really gonna come together quick and it's gonna be awesome. I know, I don't know about you, but I can't wait to see that hamon pop out on this blade. We put a lot of work into that during heat treatment and the claying process and I think it's gonna be really cool. I'm gonna be super bummed out if, uh, if this doesn't have a lot of activity on the blade, but we'll see. See you guys next time.